Shannon Bryant, Virtual and Blended Learning Coordinator, and this video is about grading in Nearpod. The reports feature in Nearpod is amazing, and uh, there is a link to their Vimeo channel if you want to check out the reports video down below in the descriptions, because there are so many grades you can get from this report. You can get a participation grade, it is celebrated for quizzes, uh, celebrated the time to climb, and you can look at all their draw tools directly from it. Uh, it's something that I've sent home to parents if I've had a kid, especially remotely, that is not participating, I can send home that uh, board as evidence. Sometimes they will try to pull the old, my Nearpod isn't working. For NK. In that case, I tell them it's projected in the Zoom, follow along with the other students, record your answers and input on notebook paper, and email that to me at the end of class. Because I put a grade in for everything. Because it's so easy. So I can grade everything right there with a Nearpod report. One warning to you, if you're eligible, LMS is Canvas. It will integrate with the gradebook, but if you're grading using the draw tool, you not, might not be able to see that very well. So, in that case, you would use screenshots. Speaking of screenshots, take the time. It is so worth it to take some time and teach your kids how to take screenshots because maybe you just want to grade a portion of that Nearpod or anything else that you're doing with them. If they can take a screenshot and turn it in to your gradebook, it's so much easier to grade later. So take that time and teach them how to do it. I like to even keep a video instruction of uh, how to date screenshots on different devices and keep that in my LMS so I can refer students back to that. Well, what would it be Nearpod without talking about all of the different Google Suite tools that you can use? It's a wonderful way to assess students, even if it's a group project that they're working on, because of the ability to leave comments and see the uh, history of who did what contribution into that Google assignment. I love Google for grading, uh, whether it is something big like a project that they do or something small like just using the Google Form or the Google Draw It tool. You might want to consider grading while they are in the Nearpod. And I like to do that because it just saves time. So one of the ways that I've done is the one that you see on top. I would print something or if you have another device or tablet, you can use that. And it would have a spreadsheet with my roster on it and then a recording at the top of all of the slides I want to grade. Uh, that's an easy way to just grade selectively what you want to grade and have it done by the end of class. You also have a recording of who was there and paper to go back to to say, hey, this is a kid that needs some intervention here. He had questions on every slide and wasn't able to give any answers. Another way to do it is if you are interested in standard-based grading at the very bottom, I've used I can statement. So then it doesn't really matter how a student demonstrated that knowledge. I'm just looking for evidence that I feel secure that they can do that. I can also give anecdotal notes there, uh, like this is concerning, they're making the same error over and over again, or um, whatever you're noticing about that kid. And then you can use that document to take with you to an art or a parent meeting. If you haven't considered doing a summative in Nearpod, you ought to. I like it for math because I can have one question per slide and that way I can see in real time while they're doing that test on that Nearpod. And I know that they haven't been cheating because I've seen their work while they're doing it. Uh, I also like it for accommodations because on each draw tool, you'll have the ability to give them a resource if you want to, or they can use the immersive reader to have it read to them, or they can respond with audio if you turn that on. Uh, and and don't forget, check out my video on remediation as well. It's a great way to review. Uh, again, students can walk away with a collection of all their responses if they use the note-taking tool in your pod and to provide feedback after you give a test. So I gave this test, I'm sure this never happens to you, and everybody bombed. And so I thought, what am I gonna do? I don't have time for remediation because I, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. So instead, I took the top five most missed questions and I just made a Nearpod with each one of those on one of my drawable boards. Then when we were in class, I said, I want you to put everything you know about that problem and give me one high level question on your board to get credit. That question needs to start with, 
how, why, or what if. Well, what I realized, I could give kids a little bit of clue here and there, and then uh, could get them to where they needed to be without just telling them the answer. Consider doing this for test corrections because it's much more uh, efficient than just having a kid go through and checking the box of doing a test correction and you walk away having a solid understanding of what they know. So that's what I mean by feedback. Now, you can also consider make, having them put their projects in um, Nearpod. I'm not saying they make a Nearpod of their projects. What I'm saying is they can share that using the collaboration tool, uh, using the draw tool, using Flipgrid. So it could be a culmination where they're turning little pieces of their project, but they're also getting to review each other's project, and you are. So again, you can grade it in real time. This takes a lot of outside work off your shoulders, and who doesn't need that right now? Well, that's my video. Don't hurt my feelings and not subscribe, and it would really hurt my feelings if you didn't hit the like button. Thank you.